Let's take a look at the gluteus muscles now. So this is gluteus maximus. You can, of course, appreciate that most of this has been removed. The origin of gluteus maximus is going to be the posterior sacrum as well as the general region of the superior posterior iliac spine. The insertion is going to be the gluteal line as well as the iliotibial tract. The action of the gluteus maximus muscle is going to be extension of the thigh at the hip. It's also going to be involved in adduction and it is a lateral rotator. Now let's travel over to this muscle. This is gluteus medius. Notice that this muscle is the one that you would inject someone into if you were to give them a hypodermic in this region. Why? Because if you did the gluteus maximus, you might hit the sciatic nerve, which would be problematic. So let's take a look. The origin of this muscle is going to be above the anterior gluteal line on the external ilium, and the insertion is going to be the greater trochanter. This muscle is a medial rotator. It is also involved in abduction, so opposite of what we saw with gluteus maximus. It also has a little buddy, and that is gluteus minimus. Gluteus minimus has the same action. So abduction as well as medial rotation of the hip. Uh, the gluteus minimus muscle is going to originate above the inferior gluteal line on the external ilium, and it is going to insert on the greater trochanter. Since we're here, let's take a look at this lateral rotator group, this whole group down here. So this particular one is going to be the piriformis muscle. The term piriformis means pyramid. It's going to be originating on the anterior sacrum, and it's going to insert on the greater trochanter. Again, action lateral rotation, as well as abduction, abduction. The rest of these are all lateral rotators. So let's take a look. Um, notice that it's easy to find the piriformis because the sciatic nerve crawls right out from underneath it. So that's a very, very easy landmark. So once you've got the piriformis, we can go on down. So this particular one is going to be the superior gemellus muscle. Again, lateral rotator. Superior gemellus is going to have its origin on the ischial spine and its insertion on the greater trochanter. Next one over is the obturator internus. This one is going to originate around the obturator foramen, and it's going to insert on the greater trochanter. Lateral rotator, right? Next one down is the inferior gemellus. This one is going to originate on the ischial tuberosity, and it's going to be a lateral rotator, of course. Its insertion, once again, will be the greater trochanter. Gee, we've got a pattern going here. This one is also going to have an origin uh, on the ischial tuberosity. Its insertion will be slightly different. This will be on the inner trochanteric crest. Again, it is a lateral rotating muscle. Deep to the quadratus femoris is a muscle that we simply cannot see, and that would be the obturator externus. Again, it is going to originate around the obturator foramen, and it's going to insert on the greater trochanter. So how are we going to learn these muscles? Well, there's an interesting way of doing it. If you think about these muscles here, gemellus obturator, gemellus obturator deep, right? That would be go-go. And uh, I don't know if any of you remember this, but there used to be go-go dancers, uh, girls dancing in cages, believe it or not, uh, back in the 1960s. So let's just think of the go-go dancers, huh? So here is gemellus obturator, gemellus, and then deep to the quadratus femoris, obturator. Piriformis, of course, we're going to remember because of the sciatic nerve, and the quadratus femoris, we're going to remember because it's square. Thank you so much.